All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Remember, the body is characterized by inertia. Quimby brought this out over a hundred years ago. He said, your body moves as moved upon. Your body acts as acted upon. In other words, you can play on your body a melody of love or a hymn of hate. Your body doesn't care. Your body is a confluence of atoms. It's molecular. So your body is characterized by inertia. Remember that. It cannot originate any movement. It has no initiative, no self-conscious intelligence, no volition in and of itself. No more so than a stone. You have to move a stone from one place to another, don't you? Your body is composed of primordial substance. It is molded by your thought. And as you change your thinking to conform to spiritual standards, you will have new cells and new tissues as you fill your mind with the eternal verities and the truths of God. Supposing you sever your arm or your leg from the body and you put it on a shelf or on a table, it cannot get cancer, tuberculosis, ringworm, or any disease under the sun. Why? Because it's separated from the mind. It will undergo disintegration, which is a natural phenomenon, but that's not disease. For example, supposing your thoughts are full of fear and anxiety and worry, you may well get gastritis, which is an inflammation of the lining of your stomach. You may get ulcers. Modern psychosomatic physicians today tell us that negative emotions are behind ulcers and all diseases. Supposing you have the ulcers excised by a surgeon, and you continue to worry and fret and fume and fulminate, and be full of hostility and so on, even though you continue with your bland diets, yet you'll get ulcers again. So, he, so surgery isn't really the answer. Thousands and thousands of people have been healed of ulcers by filling their mind with the truths of God, establishing peace and harmony thinking on whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, and whatsoever things are honest, thinking from the standpoint of harmony, health, peace, and love, and goodwill, filling their mind with these eternal truths. And then, of course, they have a new body, because you have a new body every 11 months anyhow, new cells and tissues and bones and everything. There is no such thing as an incurable disease. There are incurable people who believe they can't be healed. Many people have been healed of malignancies. They've broken the shell. Others haven't. Because of the intensity of their fear buried in their subconscious mind. The consciousness of love, of course, is the greatest healing power there is. There are many people who are untutored, unlettered, who have no knowledge of anatomy or physiology. But they have a great consciousness of love. They're marvelous healers. Some people doctors and surgeons and others are amazed at the miraculous healings performed by these and letter people. It is a consciousness of love, you know, that contemplate the wonders of it all, that here is an infinite intelligence that guides the planets in their course, that causes the sun to shine. And they realize also that here is an infinite intelligence, which enables the astronomers to tell us when Halley's Comet will return to a split second, and governs the entire cosmos with undeviating laws and principles. They realize the indescribable beauty of God. They realize absolute harmony in nature. And they realize the divine love implanted in all of us, where the mother goes all over the world trying to heal her child, suffering from infantile paralysis or a spastic child, or where a brother serves time for a sister. He said he was the one who committed the crime. Or there's a soldier in battle who says, well, I'm not married, I have no children. He gives his life for his comrades who are married and who have children. Yet all of that love, though wonderful it is, is but a faint adumbro adumbration of that infinite ocean of God's love. Therefore, the person with that consciousness of love, realizing that the will of God for all men is life, love, truth, and beauty, and as they build that consciousness of love within them, they are the greatest healers. Dr. Flanders Dunbar, who has written a book called Emotions and Bodily Diseases. She took degrees in theology. She's a distinguished psychiatrist as well as medical doctor. And she brought out an interesting case, or cases, I should say. She spoke about a Dr. Grodick. He reported that a shoemaker was going blind. 
the shoemaker attributed to, of course, his work. And he was told to give it up. But however, his eyes didn't get any better. He suffered from retinal hemorrhages. That is, hemorrhages in the tiny blood vessels of his eyes. Now what did the doctor do? He said it was psychogenic. Psychogenic simply means it's of emotional origin. And he went to work on this man and discovered the things he didn't want to see in life, the things he had resented and so forth. And he got him to give up his um, negative condition, his negative emotions, and his eyes were restored to normal. Psychosomatic authorities, meaning doctors who study the psyche or the soul of man and study emotions, they report, for example, that glaucoma and detached retina are associated with mental and emotional disturbances. For example, I read a few years ago that there were 500 cases of glaucoma admitted to the Chicago Eye and Ear and, and Throat Hospital in Chicago and research workers discovered that about 25% of them suffering from glaucoma had hatred towards relatives, which of course affects the eyes. Something you don't want to see. What is it you want to shut out in your world? What is it you wish to exclude? Well, you see your subconscious mind goes to work on that because that's your command to your subconscious. And then it um, brings about an occlusion of your vision Dr. Dunbar recites a case where a woman was taken to a mental asylum and her sister began to lose her sight. Why? Because she felt guilty, because she hadn't been kind to her sister, and she wanted to punish herself now. She said, oh, I didn't treat her right, you know, I, I'm guilty, and so on. And when uh, the doctors went to work on her, and told her, after all, that wasn't her fault, that her sister was carried to his psychotic ward, and that uh, that was the cause of her retinal condition. She was restored to inward peace through psychological and psychotherapeutic treatment. Her eyes cleared up perfectly. She realized what she was doing to herself, and of course that she had to forgive herself as well as her sister, I mean to bless her sister, and stop condemning herself. Self-condemnation, you know, is the curse of curses. Self-condemnation, self-criticism are highly destructive. Uh, some years ago, a doctor friend of mine had ulcers in his right hand. He was a surgeon. This was when I lived in New York some years ago. He belonged to uh, a club of mine. And we got talking one day, and he said, you know, the sand of mine doesn't heal, doesn't heal, and I can't operate. He said, I've tried everything under the sun. I've gone to specialists. I've tried ointments and lotions. I've tried x-ray therapy and all manner of therapy. And yet, he said, these ulcers continue. And I said to him, doctor, why do you think it's the right hand? You know, the right is your objective world in the Bible, and the left is the subjective. I said, did you do something for which you feel guilty? He said, yes. He blushed, and he said, yes, but that was years ago when I was an intern. And I said, would you do it now? He said, no, I would not. Well, I said, you're condemning an innocent man. You're not the same man. Mentally, you're not the same. You have a new vision of life. Emotionally, you're not the same man. Physiologically or physically, you're not, because every 11 months we have a new body, including the bones of our body. And spiritually, you're certainly not the same man. So I said to him, you are condemning an innocent man. And I said, no one is condemning you. The God presence doesn't condemn. If you cut yourself, it heals you. If you burn yourself, it reduces the edema, gives you new skin and tissue. The tendency of life is to heal. The will of God for everyone is life, love, truth, and beauty, something transcending our fondest dreams. The tendency of life is to heal, to restore even the psychotic, the raving maniac. The tendency of life is to restore that person to harmony, health, and peace. For that's the movement of life. That's the rhythm of life. That's the way of life. And God is the life principle animating all men. And the God presence can't be sick and frustrated, so its tendency is to heal. Its tendency is to express itself through you as rhythm, order, beauty, and proportion. So he said, you are condemning yourself. And as long as you're condemning yourself, you can't be healed. You can't hold on to your blindness and expect a healing. You can't hold on to self-condemnation, self-criticism, which are blocking the healing. It's just the same as if in your sink, 
the pipe is stopped up with debris and corrosion and rust. The water is waiting to come through, but it can't. My explanation was the cure. And in a week's time, these ulcers sealed up, and he was able to operate again, and he was able to play the musical instrument, which he loved to play. For two years, his hand was not healed because of self-condemnation, self-criticism, a feeling of guilt. With that feeling of guilt comes the idea that I must be punished. With that, of course, comes fear. And all of this is false belief. There's no man punishing, uh, there's no being, I should say, punishing anyone but himself. Man punishes himself. No being in the sky is punishing you. God can't punish anyone. The absolute can't punish. All judgments are given to the sun. The sun is your mind. And according to your own thought and feeling, is it done unto you? Dr. Flanders Dunbar says that the skin, more than any other part of the body, shows the relationship of man's thought and feeling of his emotions to his health. And she brings out the great truth that the skin is the place where the inner world communicates with the external world, and that skin conditions are usually due to hostility, repressed emotions, anger, rage, self-condemnation, self-criticism, emotional protest against something in the inner life. These are very interesting things to realize, for the Bible knew that thousands of years ago, at least the men who wrote the Bible, they said, as a man think it in his heart, so is he. And the heart is your subconscious mind. It's seat of emotions, seat of feeling. Thinking in the heart, there are many buried thoughts and beliefs in your mind. They have a life of their own. And these subconscious assumptions and belief dictate and control all your conscious actions. Therefore, one man believes that his condition is incurable. He says his mother had cancer, his father died of cancer, and so forth, and he believes he's incurable. Others say that's nonsense. That cancer is the product of destructive thinking, conscious or unconscious. If I change my thinking, I'll change my body. I told you about the Episcopal priest a few uh, years ago. It was written up in New York paper how he got cancer. His surgeon told him it's metastasizing over your system. He got members of his congregation to pray. He began to pray himself. He went back to the surgeon after a while. He suffered excruciating pain. He took x-ray therapy. The surgeon says, it's breaking up. You're going to be well. And he became completely healed. And the newspaper article said, it's now five years later. And that man is perfectly whole. He believed that there was an almighty power which made his body, could heal him, and he was restored. So there are a lot of people who break that shell, you know, because as you change your mind, you change your body. Your body can't get sick. No sickness is independent of the mind, as we explained in the beginning of our lecture. Spiritual healing is a very real thing. It is the miraculous healing power within you which made you. And therefore, as you turn to it and realize it is now releasing itself as wholeness, beauty, and perfection, and as you fill your mind with these truths of God, and as you forgive everybody, including yourself, then, of course, you'll have a marvelous healing. If we are blind and adhere to our blindness, then, of course, we can't get healed. Blindness is man's ignorance, his superstition and his fear, his belief that the will of God for him is suffering, that's blindness. Realize that it's normal and natural for you to be healthy, happy, joyous and free. And realize your body is an instrument in which God dwells, and that you are the tabernacle of the living God. You can't be uh, free of your illnesses and cling to ill will, bitterness, self-condemnation, hate, resentment. The alcoholic can't be healed and still adhere to his self-condemnation, self-criticism, his sense of guilt, and his hatred and loathing of himself. Oh, no. He must give up all of these. He must have goodwill in his heart for everyone, for love is the fulfilling of the law of health, the family. He must pour out love and peace and goodwill and wish for every living being in the world what he wishes for himself. And he always knows when he is forgiven because he can meet the person in his mind and there's no sting but a wave of peace and goodwill. 
the healing presence is within you and wonders can happen in your life as you begin to turn to it great peace have they who love thy law and wonders happen in their life those who have found that inner peace great peace have they who love thy law and nothing shall offend them with mine eyes stayed on thee there is no evil in my pathway the divine presence is ever willing within you and realize now with me that the miraculous healing power is focused at that point in your mind where the problem is and it shattered making way for the healing power of God to flow through you you do not create vision for example rather you manifest or release it we see through the eye not with it the cornea of the eye is stimulated by light waves from objects in space through the optic nerve these stimuli are carried to the brain when the inner light or intelligence meets the outer light in this manner by a process of interpretation we see your eyes symbolize divine love and a delight in the ways of god plus a hunger and thirst for god's truth your right eye symbolizes right thought and right action the left eye symbolizes god's love and wisdom think right and radiate goodwill to all and you will focus perfectly receive thy sight he said and immediately he received his sight and following him glorified god millions of people are blind as i said that is they're psychologically and spiritually blind because they do not know that they become what they think all day long man is spiritually and mentally blind when he's hateful resentful or envious of others he does not know that he's actually secreting mental poisons which tend to destroy him that's his sickness that's his disease disease is a lack of peace a lack of equilibrium all sickness is due to ill will thousands of people are constantly saying that there's no way to solve their problem and their situation is hopeless they're saying god can't heal me at the same time they're saying with god all things are possible they say from whom all blessings flow but you see they're atheists they're denying what they're affirming such an attitude is a result of spiritual blindness man begins to see spiritually and mentally when he gets a new understanding of his mental powers and develops a conscious awareness that the wisdom and intelligence in his subconscious can solve all his problems everyone should become aware of the interrelationship and interaction of the conscious and subconscious mind persons who were once blind to these truths after careful introspection will now begin to see the vision of health wealth happiness and peace of mind that can be theirs through the correct application of the laws of mind and the way of the spirit yes the healing power of god is within you and wonders can happen in your life as you begin to say god in the midst of me is healing me now no mental or religious science practitioner psychologist or psychiatrist or psychiatrist or medical doctor ever heal the patient the psychologist or psychiatrist proceed to remove the mental blocks likewise the surgeon removes the physical block enabling the healing currents of god to flow through you there are many different methods used to remove the mental emotional physical blocks which inhibit the flow of the healing life principle animating all of us the healing principle resident in your subconscious mind can and will if properly directed by you or someone else heal your mind and body of all disease there is only one process of healing there is only one universal healing principle operating through everything for everything is alive and god is life this life principle operates through the animal the vegetable and mineral kingdom as instinct and law of growth there are many different approaches techniques and methods in using the universal power but there is only one process of healing which is faith and according to your faith is it done unto you all religions of the world represent forms of belief and these beliefs are explained in many ways the law of life is the law of belief what you what do you believe about yourself life and the universe that is done unto you as you believe belief is a thought in your mind which causes the power of your subconscious to be distributed in all phases of your life and whether the object of your belief be true or false you will get the same results 
It's far better to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Then it is scientific prayer. You must realize the Bible is not talking about your belief in some ritual, ceremony, form, institution, man, or formula. It is talking about belief in itself. The belief of your mind is simply the thought of your mind. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Spiritual treatment or therapy means that you turn to the indwelling God and remind yourself of God's peace, harmony, wholeness, beauty, boundless love, and limitless power. Know that God loves you and cares for you. As you pray this way, the fear will gradually fade away. If you pray about a heart condition, do not think of the organ as diseased, as this would not be spiritual thinking. Thoughts are things. Your spiritual thought takes the form of cells, tissues, nerves, and organs. To think of a damaged heart or high blood pressure tends to suggest more of what you already have. Cease dwelling on symptoms, organs, or any part of the body. Turn your mind to God and his love. Feel and know that there is only one healing presence and power, and to its corollary there is no power to challenge the action of God. Quietly and lovingly affirm that the uplifting, healing, strengthening power of the infinite healing presence is flowing through you, making you every whit whole. Know and feel that the harmony, beauty, and love of God manifest themselves in you as strength, peace, vitality, wholeness, and right action. Get a clear realization of this, and the damaged heart or other diseased organ will be cured in the light of God's love. God in the midst of you is healing you now. Glorify God in your body now and forevermore.